Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Forrest Wynn. He's with the Kentucky State University. He's a state aquaculture specialist there. Good morning, Forrest. Good morning, Joanna. Now, I'm glad you're here today because we usually get calls this time of year asking about the green stuff on their ponds. Right. Uh, mostly what people are referring to this time of year is filamentous algae. It comes up in large mats. It actually starts out usually around the edge of the ponds or in shallow water areas. And the, the growth actually comes off the top, uh, the bottom of the pond, but it forms these mats on top and it's unsightly and hard to fish in and everything else. So people generally want rid of it. A little algae in the pond is fine and is actually good for the pond, but big mats of filamentous algae prevent use such as uh, boating, fishing and this sort of, and it, it's unsightly. So folks uh, generally want to try to control it. It grows pretty rapidly and it, it seems like overnight it's covered your pond. Um, yeah. And so people call, they want to get rid of it, but there are steps and, and certain things that we need to do, especially this time of year with our temperatures to make sure that we get rid of that safely. Right. Most of the, the, the labels, and, and you always want to use the products according to the label, but most of the copper sulfates, chelated coppers, uh, these are these are chemicals which can be used to control filamentous algae. Um, typically, they're not going to be real effective at water temperatures under 60 degrees. Also, they have to be applied right. You, you want to mix the, the, the crystals or the liquid up in a sprayer, whichever you have. Uh, typically, with some clean water, you want to mix some of this chemical up and spray the top of the mats, but you also want to stick the wand down into the water column and try to get a good plume of chemical underneath the mats uh, you want to expose as much of the material as possible. And when we were talking earlier, just you and I, you mentioned that it, they're contact. And right. so we want to make sure that we get good contact on all Absolutely. of that. And the thing about it is it does create that mat. And you have like little little strings kind of hanging off. And that's really important to kind of get under there and get good coverage so that we get control. But a lot of times it's not a one and done application. It, no. You have to stay on top of it. Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. I mean, you it's probably going to take repeated controls. Aller algae, as you mentioned, reproduces very quickly. So an, an algae, the lifespan of an algal plant uh, may be three weeks, something like that. So you, you know, kind of the way you would take a garden or care of a garden or something, it's, it's almost like weeding a garden. You're going to have to get out there and make sure the algae uh, is is managed. I wouldn't say eradicated. We're going for management here. You know, try to control the situation so you can get the uses out of the pond that you you want to. Uh, Absolutely. And, and one of the concerns is when people call and they have fish in the pond, right. but they want to get rid of all this unsightly algae at one time, right. it, it might be a better um, option to maybe treat part of that pond. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. I, I generally recommend spot treatments. This time of year when the water is cool, you can do whole pond treatments, but you have to know the total alkalinity of the water, which is the buffering capacity, which is a pretty simple test to do. But then the, the pond depth and uh, volume has to be calculated. It, it's, it's a little more complicated. And if something goes wrong, you can create a toxicity problem in the pond when applying copper sulfate. So spot treatments allow the, the fish someplace else to uh, seek refuge. They can swim away from the treated area and you don't risk the, uh, the, uh, the problem of treating too much material, having it decay and then having it uh, deplete the dissolved oxygen in the water. Absolutely not. And so it's important because there are different products on the market is to read what that product is, how to apply it and, and follow the label. But the other thing is, is make sure that you have, you're treating the right weed or the, the right problem, because we, ha we do have other pond weeds in the state. And so either bringing that into your extension office and getting that ID. And if we don't know what it is, we can send it to Forrest to get him to help us uh, identify that. But certainly to go ahead and get started on the management. And I like how you said that um, of this particular problems in, in our ponds is super important. Yeah, uh, that's that's very important is getting the proper identification of of these plants. Uh, otherwise, we could be going after it with the wrong approach entirely and wasting time and money and 
All right. Well, certainly appreciate you visiting with us this morning and sharing this information. And if you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.